Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another digital marketing tip video. In this tip video, we're going to explore setting benchmarks to compare your competition in Google Analytics. So in the world of analytics, setting benchmarks is important for ensuring that your business is performing up to par with the competition. Uh, many of us will rely on looking at weekly, monthly, and yearly metrics performance. We also need to be looking at external competitors to tweak our digital strategies to either be on parity or ahead of the curve. And Google Analytics offers users the option to look at benchmarking reports that use anonymous data from other websites to see how your website is performing against the aggregated data of other analytics users. So how to set up your benchmark report? It's pretty simple. Um, to view the report, you just need to enable the benchmark box in your admin settings of your Google Analytics account. So let's go do that really quick. So once you hit the admin settings here and go under account settings, it will be this box for benchmarking. And what this does, it will contribute anonymous data to an aggregate data set to enable that bond benchmarking and some other features that analyze data trends. So now that we've done that, we're going to go hit the home button again. And we are going to go into your audience, scroll down to the benchmark here. And there are a couple of different options that we have to compare our website to that of our competitors. We're going to first go into channels. And just to preface, if you don't have enough data to compare, it'll just have like red boxes and none of this detailed data here. So you're going to have to broaden up your data range. So let's say you only do it for maybe a couple of days and apply that. This is what it'll look like if there's not enough data to compare. So I broaden it up to include the previous month. And there are a few filters in the benchmark report that are broken down into three categories. You have your industry vertical, your country and region, and then size by daily sessions. So first, let's go into industry vertical. There are about 1,600 categories to choose from, so you can get very specific when setting your benchmarks. But for my purposes as a social media and digital marketing blog, instead of online communities, I would consider myself to be more under um, advertising and marketing. So I'm just going to click that. And right over here, you will see uh, the number of web properties that are contributing to this benchmark. So if you get too specific, then you're not going to have a large enough sample size of websites to compare against your own. So something to keep in mind there. The next filter that is available is your country and your region. And you can choose pretty much any country in the world. And if we go down to the United States, there are different regions. So, you know, different states that we can pick from. For my purposes, I would just choose the United States. I'm not going to go into the specifics of state by state comparison. And then the final filter is your size by daily sessions. So you're not going to want to compare yourself if you're only getting about 50 views a day or sessions a day, rather, to a much larger company that might be getting thousands per day. So if we were to do that really quick, just to show you. You know, my benchmark is going to look terrible because, you know, I'm getting uh, 75 sessions compared to another website that might be getting 1300. For my purposes, I'm going to go, you know, between zero to the 99 daily sessions. And this is actually a really small sample size as there's only 110 web properties contributing to this benchmark. So what I might do in the future is go into all instead of just the United States. And that brought it up to 22,000 web properties instead of 110. But anyway, beyond that, you can also look into your device benchmarks. And this is kind of cool to see how you stack up from users who are visiting your site via desktop, uh, mobile, tablet. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But that's how you set up your analytics report, or your benchmark report, rather. And 
Google Analytics has uh, different metrics that they analyze from sessions, percent of new sessions, new users, pages per session, your average session duration, and in your bounce rate. And you can obviously kind of change these two for your acquisition and see how you compare to the competition. And with these metrics, the default channel grouping falls under organic search, social, direct, referral traffic, other that can't be identified, um, display ads, email leads, and then paid search through Google. And that's kind of really cool to see. Obviously, looking at this, um, it's important that you put your metrics in context and you're not just looking at the raw numbers. You're taking the opportunity to take a look at what the report is showing you and then kind of tying it in with a story or a narrative or do a deeper analysis into the metrics instead of just taking them at face value. Um, I'm going to go back to the United States view really quick for my country. And I'm going to change the default channel grouping here too. It got all jumbled, it looks like. But anyway, as you can see, um, compared to the competition, my sessions are significantly up. Um, my average session duration is up. And then my bounce rates are significantly lower than the competition. But my referral traffic is down. My paid search is non-existent, my email leads are non-existent, my display ads are non-existent, and whatever this other is, I'm not sure what that metric entails or that channel grouping entails. And if I were to do a more deep dive into my areas of opportunity for improvement, um, email leads, paid search, and display ads would take priority for increased visitors to my site based on these numbers. I just started using MailChimp for an email lead management service to gain more subscribers that will receive weekly newsletters with content they may have missed to get them back into my site. I also have plans to start devoting a small budget to target low competition keywords in Google AdWords once I complete my recertification in AdWords this month to brush up on that. Two other considerations for my website benchmark report would be to increase my pages per session and boost my referral traffic. I might attribute the lower pages per session to my average session duration being higher than the benchmark or social media traffic leaving the site after reading a post. Um, it might also be a good idea to include snippets in the middle of my posts to other pages on my website to increase my user flow on the site for more pages visited per session. And then as for referral traffic, my biggest weakness so far has been accumulating relevant backlinks to my site. So it might be worth guest posting once or twice a month to slowly build the number of backlinks through white hat techniques. If we're looking at the benchmark and where I'm ahead though, I'm actually surprised to see how far ahead I am when it comes to uh, social media direct and organic traffic coming to my site. Uh, recently I've invested a significantly larger chunk of time to engaging more on social, which may account for the boost in social referral traffic. And then last month, I also took steps to optimize my posts to target low competition long tail keywords, which seems to be having a positive effect on my organic traffic for the site, alongside optimizing my website theme and the load speed for better SEO. And if we're kind of looking at the devices report, again, I'm also leading the industry significantly, um, especially for mobile, which I want to attribute to uh, the use of responsive design in my website theme alongside optimizing my uh, site for faster load speeds, which may also account for my incredibly low bounce rate in Google Analytics. It's about 18.92%, which is pretty intense. But just to recap, um, setting up your benchmarks is really simple. All you have to do is click that button in your admin settings. Um, and the biggest takeaway is that you need to combine the analytics with the overall story for your benchmarks. As my colleague has said on many occasions with our clients, uh, numbers can be liars and cheats. Use them as a baseline to dig deeper for the full story behind the numbers and then see where you can improve your process from there. And that's kind of what I did with that quick deep dive into my metrics in this report. Hopefully you found this tip video to be helpful. 
If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all for the next tip video for digital marketing.